I am back. Uh, again, if you're watching this later on on VOD or, you know, YouTube or whatever, I am late on these biotech things, but I have stayed pretty blind to them. I haven't read any of them or really looked at the pictures or whatnot. Uh, but I had a lot of real life stuff going on with my daughter and her school and whatnot. But anyway, that out, that aside, uh, I am putting these out a little bit later. People have been asking me like every day, everywhere, like, hey, when are you going to put these kind of videos out? Uh, well, here they are. Here they are. So in this video, uh, we're going to go over the biotech preview number one. So RimWorld's um, third expansion, RibWorld uh, Biotech, the Mechanator Infrastructure and Labor Mix. All right. Mechanoids control in a human-centered way with big power and big challenges. Hey, all Tyne in here. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, all Tyne in here. This is the first of our biotech preview blog posts where we lay out the features of the biotech expansion and the thought behind them in more detail. You can look forward to more posts on the way. If you missed the biotech announcement, that's the video we just did before this one, you probably want to start there. You can wishlist RimWorld Biotech here. Today's preview post covers me Mechanator core concepts, mechanoid infrastructure, and labor mechanoids. The next post is in a few days and will cover combat mechanoids, enemy super mechanoids, and other Mechanator related features. And there will be many more after that. The Mechanator. God, I wish that was the name of the expansion. Tynan, why? Why? Rib World? Yeah, okay, enough of that. We've done that so much. Why that voice for Tynan? It was the first button I hit. I have no idea. <laughs> A mech link is a new implant that allows a person to form a direct mental link to mechanoids and control them via electromagnetic si signals and psychic influence. Someone who has a mech link is called a mechanator. Okay, I have questions about that right off the bat, but I'll wait because it might answer them further down. Uh, here's the in-game information. A bionic, bionic implant that allows direct control of mechanoids. Mech links are used by soldiers to control war mechs and by workers to control labor mechs. A person with a mech link is known as a mechanator. Mech links are self-installable. That's nice. So it's kind of like a neural link. You don't need like a surgery to do it. So it's not like a joy wire or something like that. Pressed into the back of the throat. A governor. Why? Why not like the back of the neck? Behind the ear? The back of the throat? The unit injects itself through the flesh to clamp inside the base of the skull where it meets the spinal cord. There, it threads a web of ultrafine wires throughout nearby neur neuronal tissues to make the direct mental link between the user and the mechanoid control band. But guess what, guys? You still can't make a barrel for your mortar. Still no mortar barrels. That technology... Can't even friggin' comprehend that one. Anyway, mech links are not simply devices for sending radio signals to mechanoids because mechanoids are not merely robots. In addition to traditional computers, mechanoids have a dim psychic presence. So fluently controlling them requires a psychic connection. By linking mechanator and mechanoid both psychically and electromagnetically, the mech link permit deeper control with screen and button interfaces. Since the mech link interlaces deep within the brain tissue, it can only be removed after death. Where we're going, we don't need barrels. Maybe they meant back of the neck. That's what I hope, but it doesn't sound like it. I don't know. Back of the throat, it says. So right off the bat, we can see that you definitely can control more than one with the same person. That's good. Mechanoids aren't controlled independently, but through a human, this design intentionally keeps the mechanoid systems focused on a human being, which is critical to building an emotional story. Mechanoids can perform in both work and combat. Some mechanoids are workers that will politely harvest crops or haul items, as long as their little power cells are charged. Some can work or fight, crushing rocks and bone with equal ease. Finally, there are a wide array of pure combat mechanoids with very diverse abilities. Incendiary beam weapons, movable projectile shields, long range charge lances, blade-covered scythers, flame spitters, and more can be deployed in many combinations to defeat any threat via interlocking tactics. This is going to be pretty awesome. There are a few ways to become a Mechanator, and all involve looting technology from an ancient dead Mechanator. If you can dig a data core out of an ancient ruined super mech, you can use it to call an ancient Mechanator ship to land at your colony and harvest the mech link from his body. 
Alternatively, you might be able to learn about an ancient Mechanator's command complex. Go there, penetrate inside through the security system, and grab the mech link. I'm really glad about that. So the ancient structures were like a novel thing from ideology that after I did it like once or twice, I was just like, eh, eh, maybe if I need a lot of Luciferium, I'll go back. But so these having a better, um, more valuable reason to go to them. Uh, I do like that. I do like that. You can also start the game with a new Mechanitor scenario where you begin the game as a solitary Mechanitor with a Mechanoid buddy. That is awesome. There's a new kind of uh, Naked Brutality or Rich Explorer. The Solitary Mechanitor. That's really cool. It's really cool. I think that'll be my first run, yeah. You missed that? That's amazing. A lot of people missed reading that one. Um, I, I'm glad we're doing these. I'm glad we're doing these. That's pretty cool. A new starting scenario. It's possible to do a single person Mechanitor run where one mad scientist type lives alone in a grand base. You can have the mechs tend you, right? So mechs can be um, be medical related. So that is pretty friggin' awesome. I might have to do a tiny map as a Mechanitor. That's pretty awesome. Uh, surrounded by waking, semi-thinking machines, making this possible was a design goal from day one because exotic play paths are so fun to explore. However, we expect Mechanitors to most often live more normally among the colonists, commanding mechanoids to work and fight alongside human allies. If you really want to scale up, it's possible to collect multiple mech links and turn several colonists into mechanitors, though this takes a long time. I wonder what... Long time is very subjective. Very subjective. I wish I knew kind of what that time frame was. We'll have to see, obviously. I'm sure you can mod it or make a game setting or whatever. Uh, but long time could be a year in game. It could be 10 years. Like, who freaking knows? I doubt it's 10 years, but... All our game mechanics interact freely. It's possible for your Mechanitor to also be a high noble with a royalty expansion, a, fellowship a religious prophet with the ideology Praise expansion, the and a deathless blood drinker with a biotech expansion, because why not? New name queue. I think I might use, just use the name queue for the robots as well. I'm not sure. Uh, Helios and Tater, thank you for the, uh, for the subscriptions. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry if I'm um, losing track of chat. I'm trying to get... It's late. And I'm trying to get through these. And, uh, of course, I want... I'm kind of excited to read further as well. So, why not indeed? Why not? You need a RimWorld? That's awesome. Uh, thank you for watching over on YouTube. If you ever have RimWorld questions, feel free to ask, especially in our Discord if you want. Exclamation Discord to get that link. All right. Mechanitors start out with the ability to command just a few small mechs. Over time, they can grow a grand swarm. They do this by gaining more bandwidth and control groups. Bandwidth determines how many mechs a Mechanitor can gestate and control at once. A Mechanitor who loses bandwidth will temporarily disconnect from some of their mechanoids. If a mech is left disconnected for too long, it may reconnect with a wild mech hive and leave or attack. That was one of the questions I had. Hmm. Boy, that would suck. Imagine getting someone up to the point of having one of those really awesome mechs and something happens and it 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 returns to monkey. No, that that's not, doesn't work. Returns to... Returns to Centipede. <laughs> control groups are groups of mechs who can be controlled as a unit. A Mechanitor with more control groups can send mechanoids to do more separate tasks at the same time. A more advanced me Mechanitor can have combat mechs patrolling a colony, labor mechs toiling in the field, and bodyguard mechs escorting them around at the same time. Guys, this is like friggin' incredible. <laughs> what? Oh, like immediately... I have so many ideas about this. That is insane. Even to the mundane, like, all right, I don't like people mining at the edge of the map. Doesn't matter anymore because you can not only have a mining mech with you, you can have a little shield buddy. You have a little shield buddy. You can have a little flamethrower guy. And if you get caught out at the edge of the map, screw it. You can make it home. Shield buddies got you, you know? So, uh, and there's, there's so many other possibilities. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Welcome back. Your steadfast Hank, loyalty 20 months, is Hank. greatly Hank, appreciated. I appreciate it. It makes the game feel brand new again. It really does. This feels like... It actually feels kind of crazy. Mech buddies. Mechanoid challenges. A basic game design principle is to push things as far as they can go without breaking the game. That means make tools more powerful, enemies more dangerous, changes more overwhelming than seems at first. 
The, the idea is to ensure you are exploring the full range of experience that's possible in your game systems. So we wanted Mechanoids to be very powerful in order to create more extreme situations and distinct playstyles. The more or impact die, they have, master. the more they can transform your game. However, in order to not unbalance the game, this meant that they needed to come with serious challenges. But what? But what? Existing costs in the game are linked excuse me, are things like consuming food can fuel or steal over time, but simply making mechanoids consume resources wouldn't feel transformative and wouldn't substantially alter gameplay, since the mechanoids can play, pay for themselves by producing the resources they are consuming. The collect, spend loop is too simple and has almost no side effects uh, to the world, story, or characters. So we decided to empathize with two new challenges that would come with mechanoids, infrastructure and pollution. We cover infrastructure below. A future post will cover pollution, its causes, consequences, and aspects, use, and, and solutions. So infrastructure, uh, obviously we're going to read below, but right off the bat, like I talk a lot about footprint, footprint when I'm playing. Like, Adam, why do you use a barracks? Well, it's very strong, but also one of the big reasons is low wealth and small footprint for best bang for your buck. So kind of like when we played the transhumanists when they first came out, this is probably going to make it take a lot of... Um, a lot more space and, you know, power and, and wealth and therefore bigger raids and, yeah. Crazy it's all in one DLC. I think that too. They they probably could have just released the mech, the mech thing and people would have been happy. They probably could have just released the gene splicing thing and people would have been happy. They probably could have re released like gene and children and people would have been happy. So having both of these as one DLC is uh, is pretty pretty crazy. It's, it's pretty awesome. I actually saw comments right away from when the DLC was released. In fact, on my first DLC video, I had a lot of comments immediately that were like, oh my God, these greedy developers putting out another DLC that I have to pay for. And it's like, are you crazy? Like people will not even think they will go out to the movie theater and spend like 20 bucks for two hours. Not even think about it. 20 bucks for two hours. They'll go to McDonald's and they'll spend 20 bucks for 10 minutes but you're telling me you're you're upset you're gonna have to spend twenty dollars on thousands of more hours of entertainment whatever people will complain about everything all right infrastructure mechanoids require heavy infrastructure that takes up a lot of space and burns a lot of electricity big sections of your colony can turn into mechanoid maintenance production and control centers You'll feel your plucky wooden village transforming into a grand integrated machine of generators, chargers, control nodes, and gestators. Your base will tend to grow large with a lot of mechanoids and have a lot of things moving and consuming. Let's take a look at that really quick. You should be paying just to keep playing <laughs> with so many hours, yeah. Wow, look at all you this will stuff. Join us or die, uh, Trisha, thank you for the gift sub to Templar and Chub Nuts. Thank you for the gift sub to Christopher. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Wow, that's a lot going on. A lot going on. This is going to be... Uh, this is going to be crazy. It's going to be awesome, though. All right. Um, each mechanoid must contain a mechanoid brain known as a subcore, short for a... Sub Persona Core. Hey, the Persona Cores are getting more use without deal without mods. The psychic substrate on which a dim subhuman level intelligence can be hosted. There are several tiers of sub cores, with more advanced mechanoids requiring more advanced sub cores. There is the basic level sub core, which can be produced by a mechanator with just some resources and time at the sub core encoder. So we can make those on our own, but not but not barrels. More advanced subcores require scanning the psychic pattern from a human mind. A person can be placed in a subcore soft scanner and scan to produce a subcore. This causes temporary mental effects, but is ultimately harmless. It's going to be interesting to see um, how long they're in that. How long they're in that. Just a Militor Lifter Construct Toid, Agrahan, Clean Sleeper. Browser ideology relics. <laughs> Fabricator, paramedic, and light mechanoid. Just a cleaning bot. Nice. 
The most advanced mechanoids need extremely high fidelity psychic patterns to work, and these can only be readily produced using the subcore Rip Scanner, which scans the brain quickly at ultra high energy, destroying it in, proce in the process. Brain melting sacrifice. <laughs> auto join. Auto joins. Oh, we got a new a new way to deal with them. Once a subcore and resources are ready, mechanoids can be produced in mech gestators. Instead of being built like normal machines, mechanoids are gestated in a mechanite-rich solution that accretes the mechanoid molecule by molecule in a quasi-biological process. Gestation takes time, electricity, resources, and occasional guidance by your mechanator. Only a mechanator can guide the gestation process since it requires a psychic link to the growing me mechanoid. As always, everything about the mechanoids link back to the human whom they serve. The gestator can also resurrect some type of mechanoids. This makes your mechanoids more expendable in combat. Ooh. Ooh. Which makes using them in combat give more distinct strategies compared to using human fighters. That is so nice. Like, one of the reasons why kill boxes are so prevalent is not only because you can easily get overwhelmed in the late game, even in normal settings. Um, and, and it's just... Like, if you lose someone, it's, such, it's so punishing. So, in this, you can have like your swarm of mechs go fight or to hold them in place while you fight you know while they're preparing you actually have um maybe a maybe not more of an incentive but at least some incentive to go out and deal with it on your own terms uh other than a kill box and we do have a no, no kill box run uh going up on youtube so check that out uh if you want but i think it'll make runs with no kill box more viable and easier uh in a good way in a good way so uh, in your melee, only run. Everyone had dozens of scars by in-game. Open combat's deadly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, monkey farm strategy, that's true, yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that before, too. Mechanoids consume their onboard energy supply over time and must recharge at mech rechargers. Mechanoids will automatically seek out available rechargers so they don't run out of energy. If they do run out of energy, they'll enter a self-shutdown state and recover energy very slowly. It's much better to have a mech recharger available to keep your mechs working hard. There are several sizes of mech rechargers appropriate to different tiers of mechanoids. Consume a lot of electricity and produce pollution as well. Characteristic cost of a mechanoid. All right. That's going to be, going to be crazy to deal with. Just the electricity cost alone. I, it'll be interesting to see how much wattage it takes. Band nodes are signal amplifiers that can increase a mechanator's total brain width. They can be quickly tuned to a specific mechanator. However, returning a band node to a different mechanator is a complex task and requires a long time. There's no limit to how many band nodes a mechanator can build, so a mechanator can have a huge swarm, though it will require heavily or heavy infrastructure to control. I really wish we would we would get like numbers, like just random, not random, raw numbers. I kind of hate that in games a little bit. Like in Path of Exile, it's really bad about saying like nearby, but there's like eight different nearbys. It's like, what the crap is nearby? So anyway, we'll have to see if there's actually like a soft limit, a hard limit, or neither. Mech boosters are enhancer buildings that boost the speed and work ability of mechanoids nearby. Great for powering up mechanoid-based factories. Mech signalers are a set of single-use... Single-use structures that can be used by a mechanator to call in fearsome super mechanoid enemies to attack you. Oh, right. Okay, we read about that. For some reason, I thought about you would just use the, um, the current communication device to do that, but nope. You need to call these enemies so you can loot their corpses for special high-tech mechanoid chips. These chips are core to the Mechanator's progression since they are needed to advance to the next tier mechanoid, uh, or excuse me, mechanoid technology. The structure of Choose Your Enemy and Be Ready is a little bit new for RimWorld and creates a new kind of self-directed game pace for the player as opposed to being blindsided by raids. I hope they add more of this. This would be pretty awesome. Imagine, like, challenging a tribal leader and like challenging a tribal leader to come attack you or even to like go fight on a neutral map that would stuff like that would be pretty awesome uh if the reward is good enough yeah this is uh gonna be a crazy expansion holy crap uh you need to kill boss mechs to advance yeah to get more advanced mechs yeah yeah uh or or you can go to some of these structures there are gonna, there's gonna be like ancient structure quests that you can go to uh to get them as well so all right, we'll explore these super mechanoids in more detail in the la or in the next blog post. 
Labor mechs. Labor mechs can perform a variety of work tasks, but not absolutely everything. Some things still need a human touch. Some are plucky little worker boys who are best kept away from danger, while others are hulking crusher machines that tank damage with ease. Paramedic mechs are designed to aid in emergency situations. They can rescue the wounded, fight fires, and even perform surgery. So not just heal, they can also do surgery. The paramedic has a built-in jump launcher for quickly getting into and out of emergency situations. That is super good. Especially if they have a lower target priority to the enemy. These can go in and save people from fires during like a centipede hit or something. Wow, that's, uh, that's actually crazy. It just basically come with built-in jump packs. Extracting down colonists from battle. It also has a built-in fire foam popper, which can also extinguish fires. It also has a basic medical skill. It can tend the wounded and sick and even perform surgery when a skilled human isn't available. That is nuts. Wow. Pyromaniac is viable. Just duct tape a paramedic back to them. Yeah. Lifters are there to move things while or where they need to go. They're small, weak, pretty easy to get and always useful. They will haul a corpse to a grave or rearm a turret. They lack a real weapon, however. So, kind of like dryads a little bit. A little bit. Constructoids can perform an array of construction tasks from building roofs to repairing buildings and even hauling resources to blueprints. The Constructoid is equipped with a small slug gun for light fence and built-in cutting blades, but it's not good at frontline fighters. It's also pretty awesome. Agrahands are small mechanoids designed to sow and harvest crops and can perform a blunt melee attack. Should I give them a sharp attack since they're dealing with like crops and stuff? Anyway, very minor thing. Clean sweepers are light mechanoids that clean filth and do blunt melee attacks. Fabricors will craft all manner of manufactured objects at your workbenches, though they can't do the same quality of work as a skilled human. Like the Constructoid, the Fabricor has a small slug gun. So these are going to be nice for like pumping out things like your components that you need to just keep making all the time. So you can have your better crafters making those guns and armor uh you know, to make, make sure you get the higher quality. And these ones you can just assign, um, you know, components, advanced components, stuff like that. That seems good. Seems pretty good. Have them assigned to make things like your shells, you know, anything that doesn't really, quality doesn't matter. So uh, I'm really curious how much wealth mechs are going to add. And yeah, it's going to be crazy. Mobile drug lab. <laughs> Tunnelers are massive, heavily armored mechs equipped with gigantic crushing claws. The tunneler can dig tunnels and mine resources tirelessly. In combat, it is slow, but its very strong armor makes it an excellent tank for absorbing enemy fire while your other fighters deal damage. The tunneler has a small built-in smoke pot pack, which can activate to spread smoke and shield itself from incoming fire. It also has a shield pack that recharges over time, so kind of like a low shield probably. Um, its weakness is that each time it takes damage, it slows for a few seconds. This means that when tunnelers attack you, even if you can't kill them quickly, you can intelligently kite them by falling back from your position to escape the blocking smoke. Maintain distance and slowly whittle the tunnelers down. More on that combat in the next post. That's it for today. Uh, all right, let's take a look at these. So there, one of the little uh, healer mechs is actually healing someone there. And this one is actually carrying someone to the other hospital bed. And that leaves Anderson free to eat his chocolate we got some that are hauling things around, and then we got the ones over here harvesting. Man, oh man. What if the raid cap is increasing with this? I doubt it because that the raid cap is more of a performance throttle than it is a difficulty one. Anderson's living the life, living the life. What? No, this is kind of crazy. Uh, they have a mech breaking down another mech. These are going to be so nice for mining at the edge of the map. I'm also wondering how mechs are going to function off map. I really am curious about that. So like, will we be able to send someone with their, uh, with their mechs out to haul scanned, uh, mining sites, right? So we use the long scanner, we scan components and we send a single person out that isn't even good at mining necessarily. Maybe someone that's good at combat, uh, someone that's going to stay happy while they're out and then take some of these mechs with them that can mine through that stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mech's just harvesting organs. There's going to be a, a lot. I, uh, so, right off the bat, this seems really, really awesome. I really like all this. 
from a min max standpoint and uh and, and you know just wondering how this is going to impact in the super like challenging modes that we do and whatnot on stream uh it's going to open up a lot of different gameplay styles a lot of new techniques um a lot more defense against like drop pod raids drop pod raids with these mechs going around 24 7 is is going to be much more doable much less scary i guess but i really want to know how much wealth how much do they count for raid points? Do they count as much raid points as a human or as an animal counterpart? Or do they have a reduced amount? Like really the, you're already gonna get the wealth cost from the extra electricity, uh, the extra infrastructure, the extra Welcome footprint back. of your stuff. Your you're already gonna get the pollution. Are you also gonna be punished with a lot more raid points from it? I hope not since it already has the other two. Um, but man, that is, uh, that is pretty incredible. So I'm gonna wrap up this little recording and uh, even though I should go to bed, I'm going to continue and we're going to do the other, the only other preview that's up right now. Uh, but yeah, so that's the first preview of RimWorld Biotech. Preview number one, Mechanator Infrastructure and Labor Mix. So uh, for anyone that did miss any of this, if you want to recheck the discussion and reactions to it, I will put this up on YouTube as well. Uh, let me end the recording and then we will start a new one. <laughs> Spreadsheet time. Yeah, definitely, definitely.